Welcome, my name is Terry Soul, and this is Programming Chaos, a channel devoted to fun and interesting programming projects to help you hone your programming skills. Today's project is procedural animation, and this is a fairly simple but very useful form of procedural animation that can be used, as you can see here, to animate things like fish, snake, slugs, reptiles, and also inanimate objects like ropes or chains. The basic idea behind the procedural animation is our objects or our creatures are divided into segments. You can think of them like vertebrae in a spine, and there's fairly simple rules for how those vertebrae behave. Each one rotates at each time step so that it's facing the next segment and then moves to stay a fixed distance apart. So let me show you an example of how that works. So here we can see the segments and you notice what happens. Each one rotates and then moves so it's a fixed distance from the segment in front of it. And in this case, the distance between the segments is equal to their radii. And one of the things we can do is adjust that distance. And this is slowed down considerably so that you can see the individual motions. Each segment rotates and then moves and the one behind it rotates and moves. Now I'll speed it up and you'll notice they're following the mouse. So here we go. And this is that exact same behavior, but sort of in real time, if you will. And so each segment follows the one in front of it by rotating and then moving forward so that it's maintaining a constant distance. And there's a bunch of things that we can play with here to get different effects. So for one thing, the distance between them can be changed. So here, they basically overlap by their radius, but you could set them so instead they just touch or so there's a gap between them or so they overlap even more. You can also change the profile. So in this case, my profile is the segment in front is largest and then they get smaller and that gives you sort of a slug-like shape. If you wanted a fish, you'd wanna start a little smaller, get big and then get smaller again. For a snake, you might have a couple big ones for the head and then a long, slowly decreasing size. So the profile of those segments defines, in a sense, what kind of creature you're dealing with. And the distance between the segments influences how it looks as it moves. So you, by changing the distance, you can get more or less flexible creatures. So in terms of the rules, they're actually quite simple. Each segment rotates to the segment in front of it and then moves forward until it's the correct distance away. On the programming side, what that means is we basically need two major pieces. We need to define the individual segments. So I'm gonna have a segment class and then we need to define the creature. So I'm gonna have a creature whose main data structure is an array list of those segments. So individual segment class, array list of segments. And with that, let's get started on the programming. For this project, as with most of my projects, I'm gonna be programming in the processing environment using the Java language. And I like processing because it's simple to get started with and gives you easy access to graphics. It's free to download from processing.org. So if you haven't already, I encourage you to do that and program along with me. All processing projects have the same basic boilerplate. There's the setup function, which sets up the program and usually in particular sets the size of the window, that's that size function, and then draw, which is a continuous updating loop that updates the graphics for us. For this project, as I said, we wanna begin with a segment class that defines each segment in the creatures. So let me do that. So there's our segment class and each segment needs some data associated with it. So it needs to know its location. It needs to know its angle, how it's rotated. So it can rotate to follow the segment in front of it. It should also know its radius so it can draw itself. It should know the distance that it needs to maintain to the next segment. And if we wanna do fancy things with sort of the rainbow creatures I have showing up here, we can also give it a hue. So let me put in all of those data members. And then we need a constructor to construct segment objects and set those values.
there's our constructor. And because of the way that we build a creature where, for example, each segment has a different size than the segment in front of it, we're gonna need to have the creature object set all of these values. The next thing that I always like to do when I'm creating a class is some sort of output so I can make sure that it's working properly. So I'm gonna add a display to display my segments. And I'm gonna do this by transforming my coordinate system. So if you're not familiar with it, the push matrix says, remember the current coordinate system. And then basically translate says, translate the origin of the coordinate system to that location. So I'm taking my origin and I'm moving it to the center of the segment, and then I can rotate it so that the coordinate system itself is aligned in the direction that this segment is facing. And now I can draw in a circle and I put that circle at location zero, zero, because that's now the origin of my coordinate system. And then I draw a circle for the segment. And you'll notice that I'm putting in two times the radius. I always get this wrong with processing. It actually wants the diameter of the circle, which of course is two times the radius. And then for debugging purposes, it's nice to put a line in showing the direction that the segment is facing. There we go. And because I've moved and rotated my coordinate system, the line, like the circle, starts at zero, zero, and then just moves along the x-axis, which is the direction that the circle is facing, the distance. And then I want to pop that coordinate system off my stack of different coordinate systems. So you can sort of stack multiple changes to the coordinate system if you need to. So that will display a segment for me. And now what I need to do is create a whole array list of those segments to represent the body of the creature. So I'm going to do a new creature class. And as I said, the body of the creature will be made up of an array list of those segment objects. And just to make things flexible, I'm going to create a variable for the length as well. And the length will really be the number of segments. So I'll start, for example, with eight segments. And then we need to program our constructor. And I find it easiest to begin by defining the radius of that first segment. And then we'll use a loop to create each segment and add it to the body. So what this does is it defines the radius of each segment and I want them just to progressively get smaller. So I begin with the full radius of 30 and then I subtract from that the number of steps that I've done, so which segment it is in the row, times this ratio, which is the overall radius divided by the length minus one. So in this case, basically I'm doing 30 divided by eight. That's how much smaller each radius should get so that the last one ends up with a radius of zero, which gives me a nice little pointy tail. So now that I have my radii, I can add my new segments onto the body. And I need to decide the location of the segments, and I'll just put them towards the middle of the screen. So this starts at the middle of the screen, and then I subtract. So each one after that is going to be further to the left to give me a little set of segments sort of stretched out. And this will just make sure they're all in a row at the middle of the screen. And for now, I'm going to make both the distance that I want between them and the radius to be the same. So this first variable, if we look back at the constructor for segment, is the distance between them, and the second one is the radius. And it is this number that we can play with if we want our segments more spread out or closer together. And then the last thing that I need to do is give them a hue. And I'll just start at zero, which is red, and then multiply by 10. So I'll get sort of the rainbow effect. And I realize if I go back to my segments and my constructor, I also needed to give them each an angle. And so the angle is between the Y parameter and the distance parameter. So right here, and I'm fine with just an angle of zero. And then I have an extra comma, so let's get rid of that. 
and round it off with one more parenthesis. There we go. So I'm creating new segments and adding them to the body, and each one has an XY position, an angle, which is zero, which is just pointing to the right, a distance that they want to be apart from each other, a radius that they want to be, and a hue, which I probably won't use right now, but will come in handy later. So that's the constructor for a creature. And then if we want to see them, I should probably put in a display function. There we go. If I spell segment correctly, this will grab each segment and then call the display function for that segment. And now I can go into my main code here and create a creature. Initialize it and ask it to display itself. So assuming I didn't make any mistakes, let's see how this works. There we go. There's our initial creature. We've got a big segment and then a series of smaller segments and they're spread out kind of unevenly because I separated them initially by the radius, the largest radius. But of course, once we start having them update themselves, they'll all draw together as they should. And you can see, because I put in that line, you can see which direction they're facing. And that's really helpful for debugging. It also adds a nice little spine. If one thing I should remember to do, I'm not updating the background each time. So the lines look a little oddly thick. That's because they're being drawn on top of each other over and over again. So let me put that in. That just erases the screen before each next update. So now I'm displaying the creature, but really what I need to do is put in that update function. The first thing I'm going to do is put an update into the segment. So each segment will rotate and move towards the segment in front of it. And in order to do that, of course, it needs to know where the segment in front of it is located. So the way that's going to look is like this. So a segment will receive the segment in front of it and then base its update on that. So the arctan2 function here gets used quite often. It tells you the angle in radians between any two points. So we take the difference in the y positions and that comes first and that's an easy thing to forget. And the difference in the x positions, we plug those into arctan2 and that tells us the angle between the two, the center of the two segments in this case. And so all I need to do is have the segment that is doing the update rotate to be at that angle. So literally just angle equals A. Now I need to decide if it needs to move forward or not. And because of the way our creatures are always sort of moving forward, I don't have to worry about them backing up. So I need to calculate the distance between the center of my current segment and the segment in front of it, the previous segment. So there's our standard, take the distance and square it, plus the y distance squared, and then take the square root. That gives me the overall distance. And remember, distance is the target distance between the two. So if D is larger than that target distance, I need to meet, move forward. And the amount I need to move forward is the difference between those. So I'll call this delta. So I need to move forward by that amount. There we go. So this is just our standard trig, the cosine of the angle times delta. If I want to move like this, that gives me the X amount that I should move. And then if I do the same thing, but with the sign, that gives me the Y amount I should move. And so my segment is moved to the new correct location. So that's actually all there is for the update for the segment. Rotate and then move the right distance if necessary. And now what I have to do is go into the creature and have it do that update for every segment in the creature. The tricky thing here is the head segment because the head segment doesn't have another segment in front of it. So I'll do what I did in the demo, which is just have it follow the mouse. So there we go. I'm getting that first segment off of the body. I'm using the same arctan2 to calculate the angle between them. And that should be a float, not a flat. And now I can simply say I want the head to rotate at that angle. 
and I need it to move forward. And in this case, I don't want to do a fixed distance from the mouse. Instead, I'm going to allow it to move at some speed. So it's the same trig with a sine and a cosine, but instead of multiplying it by a delta, I'm going to multiply it by some speed. There we go. And of course, speed is not defined, so I'm going to add that as part of the class. So there we go, I'll do a speed of four. And this now moves the head forward. And then I simply need each segment to do its update, but using the previous segment. So I start at one, not zero, because the head segment has already moved. So I'm gonna use C as the current segment. And P here will represent the previous segment, so the one in front of the current segment. And I'll get each of those. And then I want that current segment to update based on the location of the previous segment by calling the update function I just wrote. And so that really is just about all there is. I need to go to my main code here and ask C1, my creature, to update itself before it displays itself. So let's see how this works. So there we go. I've got a little creature following the mouse around with a nice procedural animation, just what we would like. And I can go in and do things like change the length of the creature just by changing the length there. And so now I have a much longer creature and I could mess with things like the size, I can change the shape simply by changing the function that I use to calculate the different radiuses. I can also go in and set the distance between them to be smaller or larger. So let's do that. So I'm going to ask for a smaller distance between them, half the radius. And now you can see I get a much tighter set of circles. So there are a couple of issues that we might want to add to this, but this is the basics of our procedural animation for snakes, fish, lizards, all sorts of different creatures. One thing is we might want to do an outline along the edge of the body. So to do that, I want to find the sides of each segment and draw lines back to the segment behind it. So instead of creating a creature that is a series of circles, it looks pretty good if you want to do like a segmented worm, not so good for a fish. We want those lines along the side of the body, so I'll show how to do that. The other issue we have is if it curls back on itself, you get sort of a little kink, and it doesn't look too bad in the segmented version. So I'm not going to worry about it just yet, but in the sort of body version where we're doing the lines along the side, that actually creates a weird kink. And the solution to that is just to limit the size of the turns. Okay. So again, this is the basic procedural animation. That's all it takes. And if you want to run with this on your own, go for it. I'm going to show next how to do sort of a body instead of the segmented version. Let's do that. And the basic idea is we're going to change how we display our creature. So instead of displaying each segment, what I want to do is draw a line, and you can sort of see it here, although the line doesn't show up real well, between this point on a given segment to that point on the segment behind it. So let's make that modification to our display function. To draw the sides of the body, as I said, we need not one segment, but two segments. I need the segment and the one sort of behind it. I'll call that next. And because it's the one behind it, I can no longer go to length. I need to go to length minus one. So I'm going to stop one before the last segment because the second to last segment will draw the lines back to the last segment. And I'm not going to display my circles anymore. Actually, let's leave it in for now so we can sort of see both at once. And there's quite a bit of code that we have to add because we have to calculate four different points the left and right on the segment in front and the left and right on the segment behind. And that's going to involve, again, using some trigs. So I'm going to put that in here pretty quickly and then explain how it works. So this is the first piece. I'm trying to get the x value, which is to the left 
of that first segment. And so I start at the location of the segment, and then I add to that the radius times the cosine of the angle minus 0.5 pi. 0.5 pi is 90 degrees, so I'm angling, taking this is the heading of the segment, I'm rotating that by 90 degrees, I'm moving out by the radius, and that gives me the x value off to the side. And then I need to do the same thing for the y value, except I'll use the sine instead of the cosine. And then I need to do the same thing for the segment that is behind this segment. There we go. And now that I have those four points, I can just draw a line between them. So let's see if that all works OK. So let's see here saying the value of y1 is not used, and that's because I did not put it in there. There we go. So let's see how this looks. Not quite right. So you'll notice the lines along the side, you can see the lines there, but they're sticking out a little bit. So I did something wrong. Let's see if we can figure it out. There we go. You probably saw this as I was typing. This should be a sine, not a cosine. There we go. So it's a little hard to see because my circles, my segments overlap so much, but I do have a line going down one side now. Let's go up and spread them out a bit more. So I'll just make that radius again. That will spread them out a bit. And now you can see that line down one side of the creatures. And I simply need to duplicate that to add the line to the other side. So I'm going to take all of that code and paste it in except that now I want the point on the other side, so plus 90 degrees or plus half a pi. And now we have lines down both sides. And in fact, we can go in and remove the display and you just get the body of the creature. And you can see there, if I turn too sharply, it puts weird kinks in. And so that's something that I wanna fix by changing how sharply it can turn. It also, when it reaches the mouse, you get weird effects because it's doing strange things. That's not going to be a problem once we fill in the rest of the code. So don't worry about that piece. But what I do want is to add sort of a head here. So let's do that. And all that requires is in the display, putting in a little arc at the beginning. So as we did with the update function, I'll begin by getting the head segment and then work from there. I'm gonna be drawing an arc, so I don't want any fill, so I might as well put that in right away. I'm gonna to translate to the location of the head segment, and I need to do that because as I said, what I wanna do is draw in a little arc to close in the head. And that's going to require moving to the location of the head and then in particular rotating so the arc is in the right direction. So I need to put in my rotate by the angle that the head is at. And then I just need to draw an arc. And this is the way the arc function works if you're not familiar with it. That's the location of the center of the arc, which because I've translated to the right location is the origin of my coordinates. Then we have to tell it the diameter of the arc in both directions. And that's going to be radius times two because I have to give it the diameter. And then I have to tell it the starting and end angle of the arc. And so I want to go basically from minus half a pi to pi, which is same way we were thinking about the sides along the segments. I want to go from one side all the way around to the other. And then I need to pop that matrix off. So there you go. Now we have a nice little head. If I want, I could make it a little pointier by changing the arc diameter. And it's this first parameter that defines how far out it sticks in ahead. So there we go, that gives me that slightly more rounded front if I want. And this again is looking like a pretty good slither with the slight problem that it can loop back on itself, which is a little frustrating. So let's fix that. And to fix that, we need to go to the update and instead of setting the head angle to the angle, which allows for very sharp turns, what I wanna do is calculate the difference between them and only turn by a little bit. So here's what I mean by that. 
This is the difference between my target angle and the head angle. And what I'd really like to do is take the head angle and just adjust that by a fraction of the delta. So something like this. So I'm going to take that difference and I'm going to take one hundredth of it, which seems like not much, but we do lots of updates per second. And so now the head is going to turn more slowly. And as we'll see in a minute, doesn't quite work. So you can see it's turning more slowly, but then suddenly it oddly turns away. And if I'm lucky, it will come back onto the screen, but maybe not. So let me rerun this so you can see it again. So notice that it's turning kind of slowly and then zoop, turns in the wrong direction. And the reason for that, and this comes up quite a bit when you're dealing with rotational angles and differences, is when it gets to the zero angle, it instead of going, for example, the shortest distance, it decides to go the longest distance. And then it gets here, and instead of going the shortest distance, it decides to go the longer distance. One way to think about it is, zero and 360 and whatever 720 are all the same and when you take that difference you might get up instead of the shortest angle you might get extra loops in there if you will you might have an extra 2 pi or an extra 360 added into the delta so what we really need to do here to make this work is to make sure that delta is between minus pi and pi that keeps it restricted to one circle and we don't have the problem that it's looped around a few times and delta gives us weird results so let me put that in There we go. So this makes sure that delta is in the range minus pi to pi. If it's smaller, we add 2 pi. If it's larger, we subtract 2 pi. Puts it in the right range, and now we get a nice follow, and we don't get that weird turn off to infinity. And this is actually turning a little slower than I might like. There we go. It comes back on the screen. So if I want it to turn faster, I can just up this delta factor. So let me try, um, I'll add a 0.5 or another 5 here. So it's 0.015. There we go. That's a bit of a faster turn. And now it, we don't get that weird kinking effect because it can't turn too quickly. And this, if you will, starts looking a little bit like a fish, right? So there's sort of a nice fish shape. And you can imagine from here we can do things like add eyes or I can use my hue to add colors. Let's do the color piece next because that's kind of nice. So I'm going to go in and display my segments again, but I actually think that I will display them at the beginning. And I'm going to change the way that the display works. And I can't change it there because I haven't even grabbed that segment yet. There we go. I will grab the segment and then display it. And to display that segment now, I'm going to, I think, remove the stroke and just display the color. I want to fill color, which is the hue and maximum saturation and brightness. So I need to change my color mode to match because I'm using hue, saturation, brightness for my color mode here. And let's do no stroke. So I don't want an outline around my circles. And for now, I'll get rid of that line. So this is just going to draw in a nicely colored circle. And as I said, I need to change my color mode to hue, saturation, and brightness, where the hue is a 360 arc, a color wheel. And this gives me the saturation and brightness. So let's see how that works. There we go. So now what I have is the colored segments. And I'm not seeing the line anymore because I turned the stroke off here. So now I have to say, turn the stroke back on in order to get the lines to appear. So that look works pretty well, except for the head, because that arc is not fully filled in. So we can fix that instead of no fill. I will fill with the hue of the head, and again, maximum saturation brightness. So there we go. Now I have a nice rainbow colored fish. And in addition, it's got lines 
outlining the body on each side. So from there, there's lots of things that you can add. In my example, I have little eyes. Another cool effect is to, when you display some of the segments, add a line sort of hanging off the back, and that ends up looking a little bit like a fin. In fact, let me put in the fin because I think it's a nice effect to take a look at. So I'm gonna do this as a separate call. And it's pretty simple. I just wanna take a few of the segments and draw a line sort of like we did with the distance to show how the segments were connected. I'm actually gonna draw it backwards so it sticks out of the back of the segment. And you'll see what I mean here in a second. And I only want this on a few of the segments, so that's why I'm going from two to five. So as usual, I'm gonna to translate to the middle of that segment, rotate by the angle of that segment. And then as I said, I'm gonna draw a line backwards, so I have a negative distance, and I'm gonna make it fairly long, so negative three times the distance. And that should be that segment's distance. And one thing I could have done instead was made the draw fin part of the segment class. So instead of writing all of the code here, I could have done s dot draw fin, and the segment could have drawn the fin itself. How you structure that is up to you. But if we take a look at this, now notice that we get some lines coming off the back of those segments that give a nice sort of fin looking effect. And I like them because they emphasize the movement a little bit. They emphasize how the body is turning and you can draw them on more segments, longer, shorter, thicker, et cetera. Okay, so there is our basic procedural animation for things like fish or snakes or slugs. But again, lots of things to play with. In my example here, I haven't taken the time to do it. You can add some eyes always good for making creatures feel more real. You can play with how the colors work, lots of different things to adjust and try out. If you get anything really cool, please put a comment down below. I'd love to hear about it. And if you like this content, I encourage you to subscribe. Thank you and happy programming.